Samson. Many movies have been written about this man and his uh, girlfriends and so on. We're going to go to the 13th chapter of the book of Judges. We are, Israel is uh, oppressed by the Philistines now. The Philistines basically, remember what Philistine meant? Uncivilized, uncouth uh, wranglers, basically. And now we're going to go look at Samson. Now the sons of Israel again did evil in the sight of the Lord. They're good at that, aren't they? Kind of reminds us of us. So the Lord gave them into the hands of the Philistines for how many years? Forty, Forty years. Forty is a very important number, isn't it? And there was a certain man of Zorah, the family of the Danites, whose name was Manoah. Manoah means rest, by the way. Rest. R-E-S-T. And his wife was barren and had no children. And an angel of the Lord appeared to the woman and said to her, Behold, now you are barren and born no children. Now, you have to realize that a family, when they got older, they had to depend upon their children. They had to have children. They had to train those children upright and so they would take care of them when they're in their older age because otherwise they would just die of starvation and that's basically it. They would be, there was no social security or anything at all at this period of time. But there was nothing to take care of, no, no medical services or anything. This was, you had to pass on your fortune to your child and trust the child to take care of you. So now they're child. But you shall conceive and give birth to a son. Now we know many times there were many miraculous births in the Bible, wasn't there? A lot of miraculous births. Now therefore be careful and do not drink wine or strong drink, nor eat any unclean thing. Behold, you shall conceive and give birth to a son. No razor shall come upon his head, for the boy shall be a Nazarite. Now what is a Nazarene? And what is a Nazarite? Somebody who has special conditions placed on their life. The Nazarite is someone that, that actually walks the way of a priest in service. A priest in service had to live differently than a priest when he was not in service. He would go in service for so amount of time and, and he would have to not have any contact with a woman. He, he could not have any contact with the grapes, grapes, nor wine, nor any unclean thing while they were in service. Now, Nazarite was in service all the time to the Lord, supposedly. People be a Nazarite. Now, Nazarene is somebody from Nazareth. Nazareth. And he shall begin to deliver Israel from the hands of the Philistines. Then the woman came and told her husband, saying, A man of God came to me. Basically, uh, Elohim came to me and, and his appearance was like the appearance of an angel of God. Very awesome. And I did not ask him where he came from nor did he tell me his name. But he said to me, Behold, you shall conceive and give birth to a son. And now you shall not drink wine or strong drink nor eat any unclean thing for the boy shall be a Nazarite to God from, from the womb to the day of his death. Then Manoah entreated the Lord and said, O Lord, please let the man of God whom you have sent come to me or come to us again and he may teach us what to do for the boy who is to be born. And God listened to the voice of Manoah. And the angel of God came, the angel of Elohim came again to the woman and she was sitting in, in the field but Noah, her husband, was not with her. So the woman ran quickly and told her husband, Behold, the man who came the other day has appeared to me again. Manoah rose and followed his wife, and when he came to the man, he said to him, Are you the man who spoke to the woman? And she said, and he said, I am, Ego Amy in Greek. Asher Hayah. 
in Hebrew. Manoah said, Now, when your words came to pass, what shall be the boy's mode of life and his vocation? And the angel of the Lord said to Manoah, Let the woman pay attention to all that I said. She should not eat anything that comes from the vine, nor drink wine or strong drink. Now, what is the difference between wine and strong drink? Wine and strong drink. Strong, strong drink was a very sweet drink that had a lot of sugar in it and it had more alcohol in it than wine. Wine, basically, after just hours after the, the grapes are squeezed or even picked, they start to ferment. And when the ferment takes place, the sugar in the grape juice begins to turn into wine, to, into uh, alcohol. So, wine has alcohol in it. All of the all of the wine, all wines have alcohol in them that are natural. But strong drink is a very sweet wine and they used it for medicinal purposes, for painkiller, etc. Nor eat anything unclean that her observe all that I commanded. And Manoah said to the angel of the Lord, please let us detain you so that we may prepare a kid for you. A, uh, this was custom. This was a common custom of the day. They're going to feed this man. And the angel of the Lord, James, said to Manoah, Though you detain me, I will not eat your food, but if you prepare a burnt offering and then offer it to the Lord, for Manoah did not know that he was the angel of the Lord. He is Jehovah. Who he was. Pre-incarnate Christ. And Manoah said to the angel of the Lord, What is your name? So that uh, when your words come to pass, we may honor you. But the angel of the Lord said to him, Why do you ask my name, saying it is wonderful? This is Jehovah. This, it is incomprehensible. This word, Isaiah 9 and 6 also, it refers right straight to that. Let's go there for a moment, Isaiah 9 and 6, if we can find it, that is. Isaiah 9 and 6. This old Bible's about worn out. Isaiah 9 and verse number 6. Still looking for it. For a child shall be born to, to us, a son shall be given to us, and the government will rest upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called what? Wonderful. Now who is this talking about? This is this talking about Jesus. This is a type of Jesus' birth. Wonderful Counselor and Mighty God. Eternal Father, Prince of Peace. Literally the Father of Eternity. Jesus Christ created all things. So Manoah took the kid with the grain offering and offered it on the rock. To the Lord, he performed wonders while Manoah and his wife looked upon. And it came about when the flame went up from the, the altar toward heaven that the angel of the Lord ascended in the flame of the altar. When Manoah and his wife saw this, they fell on their faces to the ground, and they said, Now the angel of the Lord appeared no more to Manoah's wife. Then Manoah knew that he was an angel of the Lord. He was actually Jehovah the angel of Jehovah. And Manoah said to his wife, we surely, we shall surely die for we have seen God. He knew that he had seen God. But his wife said to him, if the Lord had desired to kill us, we would have been killed. He would have accepted, he would not have accepted the burnt offering and a grim offering or a grain offering from our hands nor would he have showed us all these things, nor would he have let us hear things like this at this time. And the woman gave birth to a son. Now, first of all, she had to have sexual union with her husband. She caught seed, literally, and this child was in her womb for nine months. She had to follow the rules of God in doing this. Now let's see what happens. From this child, it's going to be great honor and great 
disappointment also. And a woman gave birth to a son and named him Samson, like the sun. Samson means like the sun. And the child grew up, and the Lord blessed him, and the Spirit of the Lord began to uh, uh, poke him. Poke him. Have you ever poked somebody? Just poked them a little bit and get their attention? Yeah, you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, me. <laughs> a lot of time. And the Spirit of the Lord began to stir him, poke him, and Manahadion between Zorah and Eshkel. He jabbed him, he poked him. <coughs> Verse number 1, chapter 14. Then Samson went down to Timnah and saw a woman in Timnah, one of the daughters of the Philistines. Now, what's, what is the thing? If a, remember, a Nazarite, when a when a, uh, a priest is in his service, he cannot be with his wife. He cannot be with any woman. He cannot eat grapes. He cannot eat uh, uh, any type of grapes, what we call cakes or anything like that at all. He cannot drink wine. He cannot drink wine or grape juice. And now, what's Samson doing? He went down to Timnah and saw a woman in Timnah, one of the daughters of the Philistines. Now this is, this is what you call marrying the enemy. So he came back and he told his father and mother, I saw a woman in Timnah, one of the daughters of the Philistines, and now therefore get her for me as a wife. He's not supposed to have a wife. He's not supposed to have a woman. He's, for, he's born for a purpose, like John the Baptist. Then his father and his mother said to him, is there no woman among the daughters of, of our relatives or among our people that you go and take a wife from the uncircumcised Philistines? But Samson said to his father, go get her for me. She looks good to me. She looks good to me. Well, rebellion, huh? Rebellion. The man had the right mother, he had the right father. The mother and the father raised him correctly, and yet he goes the wrong way because of his Adamic nature. And yet he's something special for the Lord. God is going to use this unfit vessel to do his work. However, his father and mother did not know that it was the Lord, for he was seeking an occasion against the Philistines. Now at that time the Philistines were ruling over Israel. So now God is going to use this woman to make Samson mad. He's going to be mad. He's going to be angry. Then Samson went down to Timnah with his father and his mother and came as far as the vineyards of Timnah. And behold, a young lion came out roaring toward them. And the Spirit of the Lord came upon him mightily so they tore him as he tears a kid, though he had nothing in his hand. In other words, he just ripped that lion apart. And a lion is a very powerful animal. But he did not tell his father or his mother what he had done. When he returned later to take her, he turned aside to look at the carcass of the lion, and behold, a swarm of bees and honey were in the body of the lion. Now, a lion is an unclean animal, isn't it? Lion is an unclean animal. Now, bees, honey is a, is a clean, something that you can eat. But when it's in the carcass of an unclean animal, it becomes what? Unclean and contaminated. So he went down and uh, he talked to the woman. And she looked good to Samson. Again, she looks good. And when he returned later to take her, he turned aside to look at the carcass of the lion. Behold, a swarm of bees and honey were in the body of the lion. Now, boy, they must have gone to work, huh? So he scraped the honey into his hand and went on eating as he went. Now what's he doing? First of all, he's broken his vow as a, Naz as a Nazarite because he's going to take this woman. And now 
he's going to eat something that's unclean. So we went in as he ate it, and he did not tell them that he had scraped the honey out of the body of the lion. Then his father went down to the woman, and Samson made a feast there, for the young man customary that did this. Verse number 11 now. And it came about when they saw him that they brought 30 companions to be with him. He had uh, his best friends. They were like bride, grooms. What do you call them? Groomsmen or something? Yeah. Then Samson said, to them, Let me now propound a riddle to you. And if you will indeed tell it to me within the seven days of the feast, now they're going to have mar they're going to get married. But what they did, they didn't perform a marriage ceremony. They just made vows to each other with the mother and the father of both families, and they went into a tent and they cohabited. They, what we might call, uh, consummated their marriage for seven days. They did. This. And they would eat, and they would drink, and they would eat food, and they would drink wine. Now, he's probably drinking wine now, isn't he? If you'll detail me within the seven days of the feast and find it out, I will give you 30 linen wraps and 30 changes of clothes. 30 linen wraps, that's underclothes. They're, they were called, all their clothes were called wrappers. Wrappers, that's what they were called. But if you are not able to tell me, then you'll give me 30 linen wraps and 30 changes of clothes. And they said to him, propound the riddle that we may hear it. So he said to them, out of the eater came something to eat. And out of the strong came something sweet. But they could not tell the riddle in three days. And it came about on the fourth day that he said to Samson's wife, that they said to Samson's wife, Entice your husband that he may tell us the riddle, lest we burn you. They are threatened to kill her. They have threatened to burn her alive. And your father's house with fire, and have you invited us to impoverish us? Is this not so? In other words, now, you've invited us here now. They didn't have to do this, but they made a covenant with him to do it. And Samson's wife wept before him. You only hate me, she said. You do not love me. Have you ever heard somebody do this? You don't love me? You have propounded a riddle to the sons of my people. Now they picked out bridesmen from their people, not his people. And have not told it to me. And he said to her, Behold, I have not told it to my father or my mother, nor should I tell it to you. How she wept before him for seven days. Now, now she, he's going to go in there and make love to this woman, and she's bawling all the time. She's bawling. Leave me alone, boo, boo, hoo, boo, hoo, boo, hoo. And she wept before him seven days while their feast lasted, and it came about on the seventh day that he told her because she pressed him hard, and he wanted to be with her. You know, now she's just bawling all the time. So she told the brittle to the sons of her people. So the men of the city sent him on the seventh day before the sun went down. What is sweeter than honey? And what is stronger than a lion? Now. And he said to them, Have you not plowed with my heifer? You have not found out my riddle. What did he tell them? You have been having sex with my wife. Or you would not have known the riddle. You plowed with my wife. You plowed with my heifer. Then the Spirit of the Lord came upon him mightily, and he went down to Ashkelon and killed 30 men, 30 of them, and took their spoil and gave the change of clothes to those who told the riddle, and his anger burned, and he went up to his father's house. But Samson's wife was given to his companion now, who had been his friend. The best man at the wedding. Her family takes and gives his wife now that she has been she she has been with him. She has been he the the marriage has been sealed. Now you remember back then 
everything between a man and a woman was sexual. It was very, the Hebrew is very explicit on these things. And that a woman, when uh, she married a man, they took a white cloth and laid it on her, her, and when they had sexual union, if there was blood on it, he could keep the woman because she was a virgin. If there was not blood on it, he could take the cloth and say, look, the woman's not a virgin. You can have her and there's your cloth. Now, now he, they take this woman after she had been sealed to Samson and gives her to the best man at the wedding. Angry. This is going to cause Samson to forget about all of this and just be angry, so angry that he will, the Spirit of God will come upon him and he will take out vengeance upon these people. And that's just the beginning of the story. Previews of coming attractions. Our Father, we send this message out for your honor and glory. Please use it as, as we study your word and see the flaws and the perfections in your work and your love for us and your ability to use the unclean to do the clean work sometimes. Father, please go with this message wherever it goes throughout the world and strengthen your people. Help them understand you and your ways because we know that your word explains you to us, that it reveals you to us. Please forgive me where I failed you. In Jesus' name I pray.